There's a saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. But reading into some pictures can be difficult, especially with wartime photographs. If you have ever wondered what Soviet World War II tank markings mean, or just how to read them, this video will give a comprehensive overview of Soviet tank markings and identification processes to give you the ability to read into those thousand words buried within the wartime photograph. I will focus on the Soviet units which fought on Hungarian soil, namely those armored corps operational under the second and third Ukrainian fronts during late 1944 through 1945. Such late style of markings can be generally applied to all Soviet armored corps with changes here and there as can be expected. I will link the sources from which this video's information was pulled from, and I would like to give a special thanks to Gabor Horvath, who was instrumental in my understanding and work that went into this video. The Soviet tank identification system was quite complex and could vary from one unit to another with combinations of symbols, letters, and numbers used to identify tanks. No matter the combination of markings, two pieces of critical information were usually visible on marked tanks. To better understand how their identification worked, we need to recall what the organization of armored units looked like. In my Organization of Armor video, I went over the structure of the Soviet Tank Brigade. This video will build on the structures outlined within the tables of organization and equipment and help illustrate how Soviet units would apply vehicle identifications within this framework. The Soviets used four organizational levels to identify their tanks, namely the Corps level, Brigade level, Battalion level, and the individual vehicle level. I will start with the vehicle level. The vehicle level consisted of identifying each tank with a vehicle number within a unit, creating a numbering system. This was the most widely and consistently used identification marking. To understand how the numbering system worked, let's look at a Soviet tank brigade as an example. A Soviet tank brigade consisted of two command tanks under which lied three tank battalions. Each battalion consisted of a battalion commander leading two companies of 10 tanks each. A battalion had 21 tanks total. The tank brigade had an official capacity of 65 tanks, however due to wartime circumstances this number could both shrink and swell depending on losses. The vehicle numbering within the tank brigade was rather straightforward, ascending double digits from 01 through 65 to cover the entire brigade. All markings would be applied in either red or white paint, the color of which would be consistent within the entire unit. The Soviet mechanized corps held three mechanized brigades holding one tank regiment each. A tank regiment consisted of three command tanks and two messenger tanks, followed by three companies of ten tanks in the same organization as within the tank brigade. Vehicle numbering was again ascending double digits ranging from 01 through 35. Color schemes were again either white or red and would be consistent within a unit. With the numbering system understood, we come across the first sign of many Soviet marking complications. How can we tell if a tank is part of a tank regiment or a tank brigade if the vehicle number is below 35? What's worse is that some tank regiments had extra tanks attached to them. If the vehicle number is over 40, we can be confident that the tank is part of a tank brigade. So, how do we identify tanks with numbers below 35? In Soviet tank identification, one needs to remember that at a maximum, only four pieces of identification information can be present. Usually, there was only two that were standard on most tanks the vehicle number, and the brigade number. Brigade markings offer a second set of complications for identification. As the brigade marking had to be a single digit, brigade codes on tanks sometimes did not match the official brigade number a tank was part of. Vehicles within tank regiments had the mechanized brigade's single digit brigade code applied to the tank, 
with the number variation rule as well. This complication mainly stems from the fact that brigades came into creation at different times during the war, and thus their numbers could be quite high. The corps level units needed a simple way of identifying their own tanks on the battlefield, and thus gave their brigades brigade codes which ascended within a given system, either numbers or letters, for ease of identification. This leads to complications when analyzing photographs of Soviet tanks. To understand the brigade system, let's analyze a few armored corps, beginning with the 4th Guard's mechanized corps. As we can see, the Guard's mechanized brigade numbers run in ascending order but are two digits, while the Guard's tank brigade is also two digits. This required the 4th Guard's mechanized corps to get creative with its identification system. They chose animal emblems to distinguish between the brigades. The 13th Guard's mechanized brigade used the deer. The 14th Guard's mechanized brigade used the elephant. The 15th Guard's mechanized brigade used a flying swallow. And the 36th Guard's tank brigade used a dancing bear. Very Russian indeed. The 23rd Tank Corps' three tank brigades had no flow in its numbering, so therefore the Corps opted to use Cyrillic letters to identify its tanks. The 3rd Tank Brigade used the Cyrillic V. And the 39th Tank Brigade used the Cyrillic G. The 1st and 9th Guards Mechanized Corps, along with the 5th Guards and 18th Tank Corps, used numbers for brigade code identification. Again, their brigades would flow in three number cycles and would not need to match the official brigade or regiment number. Here we have Tank 334, whose brigade code does match its official brigade number. This picture has two tanks from the 9th Guards Tank Brigade, and the brigade code matches the official brigade number. This tank has a brigade code of 5, as the official tank brigade number is 3 digits. And finally, we have a similar situation with a tank where the brigade code does not match the official brigade number due to digit constraints. The next common identification marking was the core marking. These were usually shapes, but could also be letters and numbers. This tank has the core emblem of the 9th Guard's mechanized core. This tank has an emblem matching the number of the core. Tank 202 of the 7th Mechanized core has its emblem within the brigade marking. And this tank of the 23rd Tank Corps has its core emblem around the brigade marking. Putting all this information together, we should be able to identify Soviet tanks based on wartime photographs. Let's give it a shot! In this photo, we can see three markings. The diamond or rhombus of the 23rd Tank Corps, a Cyrillic letter brigade marking, and a hurriedly applied 67 vehicle number. The 67 indicates that, at minimum, Two extra tanks were added to this tank brigade for whatever reason. Here we can also see three identification markings. We can see a dancing bear brigade marking, telling us this was part of the 4th Guards Mechanized Corps, a small 3 indicating this tank is part of the tank brigade's 3rd Battalion, and a 10 for the 10th vehicle in the 3rd Battalion. In this winter picture, we can clearly see the core emblem of the 9th Guards Mechanized Corps, a brigade code 4 for the 46th Guards Tank Brigade, and a vehicle number of 52. The high vehicle number is another confirmation that this tank was part of the Corps' tank brigade. This picture looks challenging, but is quite simple to identify. The tank's core emblem makes it obvious it was from the 5th Guards Tank Corps, the large one is the brigade code for the 21st Guards Tank Brigade, and the 3 indicates the battalion, and the vehicle number tells us this was the second tank in the battalion, making this a company command tank. Now we get to the tricky stuff. This tank was filmed in Vienna and only has the number 3 and 34 on it, so we can tell it's from brigade code 3 and is the 34th vehicle. As the vehicle number is low, we do not know if it is from a tank regiment or a tank brigade, 
nor do we know what core it is part of. We need external information to identify this tank. In an order document towards the 20th Guards Tank Regiment of the 3rd Guards Mechanized Brigade in the 1st Guards Mechanized Corps, we find a story about Tank 334. The mechanic driver of the T-34 recovery tractor, Ivanov Alexiev Ivanovich, received a distinction for his actions during the Battle of Vienna, where on April 9, 1945, under strong enemy fire, he retrieved three damaged tanks, numbers 311, 334, and 318, which were quickly repaired and put back into operation. From this document, we can now say the photographed tank was part of the 1st Guards Mechanized Corps, Mechanized Brigade Code 3 for the 20th Guards Tank Regiment, vehicle number 34. This next tank also leaves us scratching our heads. We can see a large C for the 2nd Guards Mechanized Corps and the numbers 219, but 219 is neither the brigade code nor the vehicle number. Looking at another Soviet document, this time a repair order for the 2nd Guards Mechanized Corps, under the vehicles listed from the 24th Guards Tank Regiment, we see the numbers 219. However, the 2nd Guards Mechanized Corps' numbering is unusual, to say the least. The Corps chose to list all of its vehicles beginning from 100, counting up 170, to the standard maximum tank count within a Stina Mechanized Corps. As the maximum number is 272, we can assume that at least two extra vehicles were attached to the Corps during this time. From other documents, we know that the 24th Guards Tank Regiment was under a Mechanized Brigade coded Mechanized Brigade 5. So, why was the Soviet tank identification filled with so many variations and changes? Like, would this not make it more difficult to identify friendly tanks? To answer this question, we need to imagine what a World War II tank battle would look like, complete with basic radios and complete chaos. First, with each armored corps using different identification systems, it was harder for the Germans to accurately gauge and track a Soviet armored corps. The complication of enemy intelligence could be just as valuable as the destruction of enemy tanks. Secondly, as the Soviets were losing more tanks compared to the Germans, more Soviet tanks were left on the battlefield which could be salvaged and put back into service. These tanks could be put back into repair by the Germans and used to kill and disorganize Soviet forces. The second scenario is a definite war crime, as outlined in the Geneva Conventions Hague Convention of 1907, Article 23, Section F. In short, a Soviet tank bearing Soviet markings operated by enemy crews dressed as Soviets is a war crime. Unfortunately, there were many cases where this occurred. Commando Verband Jaguar, that is, Commando Unit Jaguar, was tasked with such operations. During its operations in Hungary between the winters of 1944 and 1945, Commando Unit Jaguar was responsible for sneaking behind enemy lines and creating as much damage as possible. Moving on to the Soviet heavy tank regiments, the Soviet heavy tank regiments could follow similar identification systems as the tank and mechanized brigades, but could also deviate by using only two digit markings. A Soviet heavy tank regiment held 21 tanks with a command vehicle and four companies. The first digit represented the company, while the second digit represented the vehicle within the company. From this picture, we can only know that this tank was the third vehicle from the third company. Once again, looking at the repair orders of the 2nd Guards Mechanized Corps, we can see that the 30th Guards Heavy Tank Regiment was operational under this corps. Therefore, this tank was from the 30th Guards Heavy Tank Regiment of the 2nd Guards Mechanized Corps, third vehicle in the third company. Sometimes we can come across photos of special cases which seem to make little sense. For example, these two tanks are of the same type and bear the same markings but are in different locations. They were knocked out at different times and one is in Budapest while the other is in Czechoslovakia. Simply put, these are two different tanks bearing the same markings. The one on the right assumes the role of the one on the left, which is why it received the same marking. 
These next two tanks are from the same core, but display core markings from different time periods. The one on the right has the old markings, where there is no core emblem, while the one on the left has both the old and new style of markings. At last, we come to trophy markings. These markings were applied by the Soviets to knocked out German vehicles, including tanks, to document their destruction and to accurately track enemy forces. These markings were painted on vehicles with big white numbers ascending from 1. The numbers probably began at the start of a Soviet offensive and were restarted when a new offensive was begun. Thank you for clicking on this video. If you would like to know more about Hungary during World War II, please check out my other videos on my channel. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.